Welcome to another TikTok Effect House template walkthrough. I'm August and I'm going to walk you through this waving flag template to show you how it's made and give you some ideas of what you could do with it. When you open it up, this is what you'll see. Uh, sometimes we'll turn off things like the sky background here that says try or portrait segmentation which says try. Now if you turn these on, you'll see first of all it adds a nice sky background. Secondly, it will add my segmentation of myself in front of the flag. Um, this might be a little nicer so that when you release an effect, uh, the person won't be blocked at all by the flag and they can move out of the way to show it if they want to. But sometimes we'll turn things like this off, making it much easier for you to find the parts of the, the template that are relevant. Um, for this one, we wanted to show off the brand new cloth feature. So I'm going to mostly spend my time on the cloth feature and put the segmentation and the other background kind of on the back burner and you can look at those separately. The things you're going to look at in this project are the material, flag material here, and uh, you can change the texture of what you want to be on the flag. We have this nice little uh, peaceful alien currently as our texture. Uh, so change that to whatever you want, and that, that could be uh, a million effects in itself. The next thing that we'll look at is the flag pole. Notice this flag attachment point. This is an empty transform, and uh, there's nothing on it. If you look over on the right side in the inspector, you'll notice that there's nothing really here except for the transform, pinning it to this specific position, and uh, essentially this is what's holding the flag. So this is our attachment point because we're going to point our flag to that as this is where you should be attached. Um, <clears throat> I'll explain how that works in the next part. Uh, so I think the only other thing that is most important here is the flag cloth. So this is where our new cloth feature exists and this is where I'll walk you through how all of these different parts work and hopefully you'll fully understand how to use this in the future. Now, the first thing to know about cloth is that it will, it will work on a flat plane, so you'll need a mesh that, ha that is a flat plane and all of the vertices should be evenly, uniformly spaced. Um, so our mesh that we have in this project, flag mesh 500, is attached by default. That is a plane with uh, 500 evenly, uniformly spaced vertices. You can make your own cloth um, by doing the same thing. Just pull open a uh, modeling software and just make a plane and you can subdivide it into however many vertices you want. The higher the number of vertices, the, the cooler the cloth will look and the more sort of uh, realistic it might look. If we change this, we also have a low poly flag, and we provided uh, low poly, high poly, and balanced flag, so, uh, depending on what you want to make with this template. If you're going to combine multiple cloths and segmentation and some other stuff, we recommend using the lower poly one so that performance works great on all devices. But as you can see, it might l you can kind of see that it's a little more low poly. And that's, that's perfectly fine for most cases. Sometimes you want a more realistic look, so then we'll go with the high poly flag model, and we'll use that flag mesh. And you can see just by how it drops and how it drapes down, it's, uh, it's much more realistic. Um, you'll also notice, because of the extra vertices, there's a little bit more stretch. So you might want to um, adjust the settings for the different mesh that you're using. Uh, so looking at the settings, we have the mass. You can use this just like any rigid body mass. Um, if, you, if we make this heavier, like set it to 10, uh, and then hit enter, you can clearly see it's gonna go down and stretch all over the place. If we set it back to 1.5, which is uh, what I had it at before, you'll see it uh, blows pretty nicely in the wind. The stretch resistance, so You'll see as I mess with these, if I turn the stretch resistance up, it will stretch less. Um, if I turn stretch resistance all the way down, you'll see it's, uh, it gets kind of chaotic. It's a little bit kind of like a rubber 
material almost. Um, so I'll put this back down, back up to seven, and, uh, and then we'll bring it back down in a second, but take a look at what happens when we go into effect settings. Uh, a more recent setting has been added into the physics effect settings where you can change position iterations. And this specifically relates, or, or position iterations, yeah. Uh, this, this will uh, affect the cloth as well. So if we turn this up to five, which is the default, and we apply, we'll notice uh, a little bit less of that, the stretch that, that looks maybe a little off. And now it, it will be a, lot, a little bit more realistic. And then um, the thing to keep in mind is this does have a performance cost as well. So this is another one of those things where if the only thing you're going to use, or, the, or if the cloth is the central point, the focal point of your effect, maybe it's OK to boost it up to five. But if you want to combine this with a lot of other features, I would recommend keeping it lower. Uh, try testing different things. Um, so now if we were to turn this stretch resistance down with the physics iterations, uh, it, there's a lot less uh, weirdness. There's still some weirdness, but but yeah, that's what will happen if you have a high poly cloth uh, and you turn the stretch resistance all the way down. So bend resistance is similar. Um, that will that will basically, instead of the stretch between points, that will affect how each vertice bends at a different angle from each other. So I would say if you want to play with these values, you can play with them and see what they do. Damping will, uh, will kind of slow it down over time. So, uh, so if you have damping all the way down, it will retain a lot more of the energy without, uh, without it slowly dissipating. Um, so turning it up, as you can see, will kind of uh, keep it more towards a little bit of a stable, stable point. So that's also up to you as the creator to play with some of these. Um, Intercollision should help uh, prevent the cloth from intersecting itself, so that it doesn't. Uh, so that when it hits itself, if it wraps around, it'll kind of like deflect off rather than intersecting and going through. And then the wind. This is probably my favorite feature. <laughs> uh, enabling wind allows you to set the velocity, the drag, and the lift. And notice if I uncheck this box, all of those things will go away and there will no longer be wind. Um, so the wind velocity, these are kind of just chosen in, uh, as values to keep the flag afloat. And if you look in the physics settings, you'll also see that I lowered the gravity uh, to help with that, because I think um, I wanted the flag to be a little bit more visible uh, and up a little bit more than a realistic flag, so I lowered the gravity a little bit. And then, um, Wind lift will help the will be the component of the wind that will help lift the object, and the wind drag is more of the sideways friction. Um, so enable vertex attachment. This is an important one because uh, this vertex attachment is how we're attaching it to the pole. You might notice that only two vertices on the entire flag are actually connected. Um, it's not this whole left side, it's just two vertices. And the way that we do that is we enable this vertex attachment, and then we have this cloth configuration component also added onto our cloth. So when you go into add component, 3D physics, this is where you'll see the cloth and the cloth configuration. You can only add one cloth component, which will turn your uh, mesh renderer with your cloth mesh into a cloth. And so you can't add more than one of those for obvious reasons, but you can add more than one cloth configuration. Um, <laughs> and you'll want to fully configure it and set everything up, um, but let me just show you what it does. So we've marked red here, and if you were to go into our flag material, uh, this is a nice little trick I like to do. If you do any vertex painting on your 3D model before you import it, make sure to check the box that says import vertex painting or vertex coloring. Um, and then you can check this box. And the high poly one is a little, <laughs> it's a little too high poly so we can't actually um, 
see that, but let's replace this cloth with the low poly version and we'll, we'll be able to see it. Um, the low poly one. Or, well, I was hoping to see the red that is painted on this cloth. Um, I can't remember if there is a, okay, yeah, so you turn the texture off and then you can see the, the vertex painting. And so you can see our, our um, designer for this template painted these two vertices. Now I'm gonna turn it back off and just remember that those two vertices are painted and we're gonna turn this back off. And, um, and then if we go back to our cloth, let's go back to the high poly one because we have to change the settings for the low poly one to do the same kind of flowing. Um, so we go back to our high poly one and now we know the, uh, the vertices on the high poly one are also painted red. So in our cloth configuration component, when we come back here and take a look at this, we can see we select this vertex color. Now I would be, I would just be very careful that your vertex painting in your modeling program, you make sure to get the exact hex code. So make sure if you're painting a vertice red, that it's not just red, but it's, it's actually true FF0000, something like that. So make sure to get the real hex code because it is very sensitive and you do have to be exact with the vertex color. Um, the, once you have that set up, you can select a transform. This is where we have selected our flag attachment point. Um, and that's just that position I showed earlier that's on this flagpole here. And so this cloth configuration paired with the cloth component enable vertex attachment setting will allow us to pin just the red vertices onto that object. And that's how it all works. Um, I don't think I skipped over anything. I think I gave you the full, full info. So I hope that this is helpful. Um, the only other things that I'll mention is this is dynamic. Um, this is for if you want to attach it to a physics object that has a rigid body that's gonna move around. Um, so for instance, if you wanted to attach this flag to like the pole and you also want the pole to be able to fall over with gravity, then this you would want to mark this so that it attaches to a dynamic object. Um, you can also click this prevent stretch if you're experiencing a lot of stretching and you want to stop it at some smaller value. Um, if, I, if I up this and then I had some other values that were causing stretch, um, this would be a way to reduce that stretching a little bit. Uh, so some ideas that I've had are you could use it as like maybe as a cape or try to do it with some kind of clothing. Um, you can try, I think the cloth um, feature is really cool when you drape it over other objects that have a collider. Um, if, if we put a, uh, let's see, might as well just show if we add a sphere and then we add a sphere collider and make sure it's fit to mesh and then we add a rigid body and then also <laughs> make the rigid body static and then we reset the effect. Now we have this sphere that we can push into our scene and uh, let's make it up here and then Notice only in the preview it will interact. There's not any physics simulation happening in the scene view. So when we move this uh, sphere, you can see it's pushing the flag out of the way. Now that is the coolest part about this cloth simulation in my opinion. The cloth is truly fully interactive with all of your other physics objects. And your physics objects, if I were to make this sphere um, not static and let it fall again, the cloth will actually catch it um, if you have the cloth, cloth set up in a way that it could catch the sphere. So play with that as much as you want and hopefully we'll have um, more learning resources and all kinds of things coming down the pipeline.